All right, so hello everyone, I'm Bruce Pinyang, and today I'm going to talk about how to define and construct public key inference schemes with bus and security. This is based on joint work with Jin Tuolai, Zhang Huang, and Jian Wen. So a PK scheme contains three algorithms, namely the key generation algorithm, which produces a pair of public key and secret key, the encryption algorithm, which encrypts a message with public key, <coughs> and the decryption algorithm, which decreases a self text with a secret key. Its correctness requires that the decryption algorithm can always recover the correct message from an honestly generated ciphertext, and its security requires that uh, the adversary can't learn anything from the <coughs> ciphertext. This can be defined by requiring a simulator that simulates the view of the adversary without seeing anything. So in practice, PKE schemes are usually deployed in a multi-user setting. That is, there are many senders and receivers, and each receiver has her own public key and secret key. A sender sends messages to the receiver by using the receiver's public key to encrypt the message. So in this setting, it's common that some users are corrupted. <coughs> in this case, uh, it seems infeasible to protect messages that are sent by a corrupted sender and the messages sent by, uh, received by a corrupted receiver. However, we still hope to protect messages that are transmitted between uncorrupted users, especially in the case that the corrupted messages and the uncorrupted messages are related. So in the literature, we have formally studied sender selected opening security, where only senders can be corrupted, and receiver selective opening security, where only the receivers can be corrupted. However, we have not formally defined construct PTE schemes with biased selective opening security, where both the senders and the receivers may be corrupted. <coughs> so in this work, we formally study biased selective opening security for PTE schemes. Uh, our results include four parts. First, we give formal definition of bias selective opening security for PTE schemes. Then, we construct PTE schemes with bias selective opening security in the Vancouver model. We we'll also consider a weaker notion of bus direct open security and construct PKE schemes with this weaker security guarantee in the play model. So let's start with our definition. Okay, so in the definition, <coughs> the, the, uh, the adversary is given a set of public keys in the beginning. Then it specifies a message distribution. Then it will receive chain self text that includes messages sampled from this distribution distribution. Then the adversary will choose some senders and receivers to corrupt. For each corrupted sender, it will receive the message sent by the sender and the randomness used to encrypt the message. And for each corrupted receiver, the adversary will, will obtain the message received by the receiver and the, and the receiver's secret key. After seeing the opening information, the adversary will output something. The security requires that the adversary's output can be simulated by a simulator that only sees the corrupted messages. We can also define train of text security in the setting, and in this case, the adversary is further given a decryption, uh, decryption oracle that decrypts uh, the um, soft text submitted by the adversary. <coughs> okay. So next, we will see how to construct PKE schemes with bias selective open security. So the construction is uh, built on a secure key encapsulation mechanism and a hash function modeled as a random oracle. The public key and secret key of the PKE scheme is just the public key and secret key of the CAM scheme. And to encrypt the message, the encryption algorithm first runs the encapsulation algorithm of the CAMP scheme, and then use the hash of the encaps encapsulated key to mask the message. Then to decrypt a subtext, <coughs> the decryption algorithm first runs the decapsulation algorithm of the CAMP scheme, and then it uses the hash of the required key to unmask the message. To see why the scheme is secure in the bus selected opening security, uh, we, can, uh, we recall that the adversary will receive a public key in the beginning, then it specifies a 
message distribution, then it will receive a set of cancelled text, and then it uh, <coughs> chooses some senders and uh, receives crops and uh, receives their into states. Finally, it outputs something. To simulate the adversary's output, the simulator will invoke the adversary as a subroutine and simulate its will in the real world. So in more detail, the simulator will first send the public keys to the adversary, and then it outputs the message distribution specified by the adversary. Then it, then it sends channel self text to the adversary and corrupt users specified by the adversary. Uh, then, on receiving the corrupted messages, the simulator sends the corrupted messages and the internal states of the corrupt users to the adversary. Finally, it outputs what the adversary outputs. So, in this case, the simulator does know the channel messages when generating the channel self text, so it has to cheat here. Uh, in more detail, the simulator <coughs> will first run the encapsulation algorithm of the camp scheme honestly to generate the first part of the self-text, but it samples the second part of the self-text uh, uniformly at render. This is indistinguishable from an uh, honestly generated channel self-text due to the security of the camp scheme and the fact that the Ramarco will output a run module on an uh, input that has not been queried before. Then, in the opening phase, the simulator will send the correct uh, input state of the senders and the receivers. That is, for each corrupted sender, it will, uh, it will send the <coughs> uh, remnants used in the encapsulation algorithm of the camp scheme to the adversary. And for each corrupted receiver, it will send the correct secret key of the receiver to the adversary. Uh, it should also program the RAM Oracle to make the opening and the channel self text compatible. Okay, so that's why the scheme has bust selective opening security. We can also achieve channel self text security by selectively modifying the basic construction. And please see our whole paper for more details. Okay, so the about construction uh, is constructed in the RAM Oracle model. We can also construct PTE schemes with, select, uh, with bus select open security in the play model, but we can only achieve uh, weaker security. So let's start with the definition of the weak security. In this security definition, the adversary uh, has to choose if it hopes to launch a sender select open uh, attack or the receiver select open attack after seeing the public keys. Then it has to follow its selection. Security still requires that the adversary output can be simulated by a simulator that only sees the corrupted messages. And we can also define train self text security in this case. This security definition is weaker than the, bar, uh, than the standard bar select open security, but it is uh, still strictly stronger than the sender select open security and the receiver select open security. In addition, it implies the requirement that a PD scheme has both the sender cellular security and the receiver cellular security. And it seems that our new definition is stronger than this requirement, since in our definition, the adversary can choose the attacking type after seeing the public keys. But in the requirement of security, the adversary has to choose the attacking type before seeing anything. Okay. So we finally show how to construct PTE schemes with weak best select open security in the play model. The construction relies on a new primitive called the key incubable hash pool system. Recall that a hash pool system considers a set X and a subset L <coughs> of X. Uh, both, both the set X and the subset L are efficiently sampleable. And if one samples an element from the subset L, it can also get a witness showing that the sampled element is actually in L. The hardness requires that an element sampled from the subset L is indistinguishable from an element sampled from X. Also, the hash pool system contains three algorithms. Uh, the key generator algorithm generates the secret key and public key of the hash pool system. 
the secret evaluation algorithm runs uh, 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 evaluates a function on an input x in the set L with the secret key. And if the, uh, the, the input x is sampled from a subset L, the same function can be evaluated by using only the public key and the witness for the <coughs> uh, input x. Its correctness requires that for any input x in the su subset L, the output of secret evaluation algorithm and that of the public evaluation algorithm should be identical. Also, its security requires that for any input not in L, then if one performs the <coughs> secret evaluation algorithm on this input with a random secret key associated with a public key, uh, the output should be uniform even given the public key. Based on this, we can define key equitable hard proof system by further uh, defining key subsets in the set x minus L. Uh, here, for simplicity, we consider a case that k equals 1 and this is enough to construct a picky scheme with, bias, uh, with weak bias local security in the case that each, chain, uh, each, uh, each public key is only used to encrypt one channel message. The hardness now requires that an element sampled from the subset R1 should be, uh, should be indistinguishable from an element sampled from L and an element sampled from X. We also need a new algorithm to Resample a new secret key HSK prime from an uh, old secret key HSK and actually some tra uh, travel information. <coughs> and the new secret key and old secret key should be associated with the same public key. Also, we request that if one performs the secret evolution algorithm on an input X in R1 with the old secret key, then the output should be uniform even given the new secret key. Okay. So we'll next see how to construct PKE schemes with weak bus electronic security from the key equivalent hard proof system. The public key and the secret key of the PKE scheme is just the public key and secret key of the hard proof system. And the subtext of the PKE scheme contains an element from the set X and a string in the Evaluation algorithm of the hash pool system. Um, to encrypt a message zero, the encryption algorithm just uh, outputs a random subtext in the subtext space. And to encrypt a message one, the encryption algorithm samples an element from subset L and performs the public evaluation algorithm on the input. Then to decrypt a subtext CT equals XK. The decryption algorithm performs the secret evaluation algorithm on X and it outputs one if and only if the result equals to K. So <coughs> next we will see why the scheme is secure. Because that we consider the case that each public K is used for only once in this case. Also, uh, the adversary is allowed to Corrupt either senders or receivers, but never both. Okay, so again, uh, we will use the uh, we will uh, okay uh, the simulator will evoke the uh, adversary as a subroutine and the simulate is will in the real world. In more detail, the simulator will send a public key to the adversary in the beginning. Then it will output the message distribution and the attacking type output by the adversary. Then it Sends some channel subtext to adversary and corrupts the users specified by the adversary. Then, on receiving the <coughs> corrupted messages, the simulator sends the corrupted messages and the internal states of the corrupt user to the adversary. And finally, it outputs what the adversary outputs. So, in this case, the, adversary, uh, the simulator still doesn't know the um, channel messages when generating the channel subtext, so it has to cheat here. Uh, fortunately, the adversary is allowed to corrupt senders or receivers but never both, so the, the, uh, so the simulator can use different strategies to simulate the ill-formed channel subtext in different cases. So in more detail, if the 
for those three choices to capacitors, then the simulator will <coughs> up or will sense inclusion of one to the adversary, no matter what the real message is. This is indistinguishable from an honestly generated Chinese self text due to <coughs> the hardness and the security of the hash proof system. Then, in the opening phase, it will sense the correct randomness uh, to the adversary if the message is one, but it will sense the self text itself to the adversary if the message is zero. Okay. So, on the other hand, if the adversary chooses to corrupt sub receivers, then the simulator will sample, uh, sample an element from the subset R1 and perform the security evaluation algorithm on the input for each channel of text. Then, in the opening phase, it sends the correct secret key to the row 3 if the message is 1, and if the message is 0, it resample a new secret key and sends the new secret key to the row 3. So, the if from channel of text and the secret key sent to the row 3 are indistinguishable from the honest generated chance of text and the correct secret key due to the new hardness requirement and the key equivocability property required by the key equivocable hard proof system. Okay. That's why the scheme is secure in, uh, against a weak by select opening attacker. We can also achieve, uh, we can also support multi-bit messages and achieve train self text security in the multi-user setting, in the multi-channel setting, if we start to modify the basic construction and definition of our key equivocable hard proof system. Um, please see our computer for more details. <coughs> Finally, we will see how to instantiate the key equivocable hard proof system from the DDH assumption. Uh, in this instantiation, the, we consider a group, uh, a group generator G and three other, uh, other generators G1, G2, and G3. The set X is just uh, three dimension vectors over the group G, and the set L, a subset L, contains three dimension vectors with the same discrete law. Also, the subset R1 contains elements of the form G1 to W, G2 to W prime, G3 to W, where W and W prime are distinct. So the hardness comes from the DDH assumption directly. <coughs> also, the, key, uh, the secret key of the hash proof system contains uh, a three dimensional vector S1, S2, S3 in the queue, and the public key is G1 to S1 times G2 to S2 times G3 to S3. Then, given an input x equals x1, x2, s3, the secret evaluation algorithm up puts x1 to s1 times x2 to s2 times x3 to s3. And the public evaluation algorithm up puts hpk to w. And the instantiation is similar to previous instantiations of hash proof system, so the correctness and security can be shown in a similar way. Uh, <coughs> now, uh, next, Given an old secret key S1, S2, S3 to sample a new secret key S1 prime, S2 prime, S3 prime, the secret key resampling algorithm sets S1 prime to be S1, and it samples S2 prime uniformly at random. Then it computes S3 prime to make the new secret key and old secret key to be associated with the same public key. So recall that if one uh, use the old secret key to perform uh, the secret evaluation algorithm on uh, input x in the subset R1, then it will get uh, HPK to W times G2 to S2 times W prime minus W. Um, also note that S2 is hidden even given the new secret key. So the output of the secret evaluation algorithm should be uniform given the uh, new secret key, and the key inculcability follows. Okay, so that's our DDH based instantiation. We also give a DCR based instantiation in the full paper. <coughs> so to summarize, in this work, we formally initiate the study of bus selective open attacks on PKE schemes. We give different definitions to capture the attack in different settings, and 
construct PKE schemes with different security guarantee from different assumptions. Technically, we present a new primitive called K-Incubable Hypothesis System, which may find further applications. Okay, that's all. Thanks for attention.